When a disaster happens, it becomes news around the globe. Whether it's the scale or the spectacle. Look at the debris. Look at all the debris. Look at all the debris in the air. The financial cost or the lives lost. These massive events fill mankind with fascination and fear. In this series, we're looking at some of the biggest disasters to ever strike the planet. Back down! Back down! Back down! As close as it's safe to get to IFE Upla Yerkel, its immense power is breathtaking. Over the next hour, we'll explore one of the ancient forces that shaped our planet and still holds the power to reshape it. We'll see the devastation wrought by explosions the size of a thousand atomic bombs world-shattering consequences of the billions of tons of molten hot rock spewing out from underneath the Earth's surface. We're going very, very big and getting very, very hot. Today, we're going to look at the top 10 volcanoes of all time. disasters, few ever reach the level of sheer power and primal ferocity of a volcanic eruption. Throughout history, volcanoes have been as fascinating as they are terrifying. They are, and have always been, both feared and admired, and sometimes worshipped. We have studied volcanoes all over the world, from the most deadly and powerful to the most spectacular. Volcanic time is counted in decades, centuries, and even millennia. The mass of their eruptions is measured in millions, billions, and even trillions of tons. The top 10 volcanic eruptions on our list provide some classic examples. This is just an incredibly powerful place. You see this erupting volcano, and yet all around it is life springing quickly from the lava flows. The story of our first volcano begins in the Hawaiian archipelago in the Pacific Ocean on the world's largest active volcano, Mauna Loa, rising more than 4,000 meters above sea level. The volcanic islands of the Hawaiian archipelago formed tens of millions of years ago on what is called a hot spot. In most cases, volcanoes are located at the junction between the massive tectonic plates that form the Earth's crust. But surprisingly, there are also hot spots right in the middle of the plates where eruptions can occur. Scientists have come up with two hypotheses to try to explain why these rogue hot spots exist. Either these areas of the Earth's crust are particularly thin, or they're exceptionally hot. Under the crust, billions of tons of rock bear down on the magma, subjecting it to extreme pressure. As soon as an opening is created, the pressurized magma spews out, and a volcano forms. of the Hawaiian archipelago are actually volcanoes that formed from the ocean floor, more than 5,000 meters below. As the tectonic plate moved north away from the hot spot, it cut off the supply of magma to the first volcano that died out before giving birth to another. It was like a volcanic assembly line. What we see around Hawaii today is only a fraction of a chain of volcanoes more than 6,000 kilometers long. Most of these volcanoes lie hidden underwater. Only four of them are still said to be active, which means they have erupted at least once in the past 10,000 years. On the scale of geological time, 10,000 years is the blink of an eye. But these four volcanoes have a huge amount of power. It might seem crazy to live on an active volcano, but all these mountains of fire are not as dangerous as one might think. That's because the Hawaiian Islands are made of volcanoes called shield volcanoes. This type of volcano very rarely explosively erupts. In their case, the magma churning under the crust isn't subjected to excessive pressure. So the lava, when it escapes, leaves the volcano very slowly. 
Mauna Loa, which occupies the 10th place of our ranking, was born 700,000 years ago and has remained in almost permanent eruption ever since. And the volcano of Mauna Loa erupts after a lull of 20 years. Its most Boat intense lava eruption date was 1950, when area, more than 350 night, million cubic meters of lava flowed down its southwest flank. That is the equivalent of 1 billion tons of liquid rock. Lava flows move very slowly, but destroy everything in their path. During successive eruptions of Mauna Loa, entire villages were slowly engulfed by oozing tides of 1,000 degree plus lava. Houses burned, leaving Hawaiians homeless in the face of the relentless advance of lava flows. The scale of damage caused by Mauna Loa demonstrates how volcanoes can be destructive even when they are not explosive. Mauna Loa is not the most violent volcano on our planet, but it is by far the largest in the world, almost twice the size of Mount Everest. In just 700,000 years, it reached a height of 17,000 meters from its base at the bottom of the ocean to its summit. It is so massive that it has created an indentation in the Earth's crust almost eight kilometers deep. The flip side of Mauna Loa's power to destroy is its power to create. Its oozing and cooling lava has spawned an entire island that didn't exist one million years ago, earning it the 10th spot in our ranking. Ever since the spectacular eruption of Mount St. Helens, NASA has been working closely with other scientists to assess the impact. To see the holder of the ninth place in our ranking, we head to Washington State in the United States, the home of one of the most spectacular and dangerous volcanoes in the world, Mount St. Helens. We'll relive its historic eruption of 1980. Well, when I first came out here Mount in the Saint summer Helens of falls into the category of so-called stratovolcanoes. Their name comes from the different strata seen. of ash and rocks that compose them and give them their conical shape. These mountains of fire form on fault lines where tectonic plates meet. By far, most of the world's approximately 1,300 active volcanoes are found in what is known as the Pacific Ring of Fire. Its name derives from its intense geological activity in that fascinating part of the world. Located in the state of Washington in the northwest of the United States, Mount St. Helens was born at the junction between the Pacific Plate and the American Continental Plate, where the Pacific Plate moves gently under the American Continental Plate. It is the movement of these plates that causes earthquakes. The movement also releases water trapped deep within the crust, lowering the melting temperature of the surrounding rock and creating pools of magma. Buried 800 meters deep, this seething magma chamber can serve as a reservoir for a volcano. The slightest pressure change inside the chamber can release the pent-up magma and trigger an eruption. Keenly aware of the restless geology of the area, volcanologists had long feared that Mount St. Helens would one day erupt. In March of 1980, their fears were realized. It started small, with dozens of minor earthquakes recorded around the base of the mountain. But the ominous signs were clear. After 140 years of silence, the volcano was waking up. The earthquakes intensified and were followed by phreatic eruptions, which denotes contact with water. Phreatic eruptions occur when groundwater collides with magma. At 1,000 degrees Celsius, the water instantly turns into steam, increasing the pressure in the heart of the volcano. An ultra-explosive situation. As steam and ash begin to emerge from the mountaintop, geologists observed that a large bulge appeared on the north face of the volcano. The earthquakes and phreatic eruptions continued. Ultimately, the bulge looked like it was ready to explode. Then suddenly, everything stopped. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief. On May 17, 1980, residents who had been evacuated were even allowed to return home. Experts deduced that the impending danger had been averted, but they were wrong. 
The next morning, a powerful earthquake measuring 5.1 on the Richter scale struck Mount St. Helens. The jolt caused the entire north face of the volcano to collapse, more than three kilometers of rock. The historic collapse of the north face was the largest landslide ever recorded. Billions of tons of tumbling rock sliding unstoppably for kilometers. The avalanche completely filled a valley 20 kilometers away from the volcano. The debris flow was 50 meters thick and 17 kilometers long. It was enough debris to fill the equivalent of 1 million Olympic swimming pools. And that was just the beginning of the ordeal. Moments later, highly pressurized gas and steam that had been trapped under the volcano's north face were suddenly released, causing a cataclysmic explosion. Its power was equal to 1,600 Hiroshima bombs. The enormous explosion launched boiling hot vapors, gas, ash, and rock high into the air. With extraordinary power, the eruption propelled debris remarkably far and wide and devastated a huge area. For almost 20 kilometers around Mount St. Helens, everything was blown away. Nearly 10 million trees were uprooted. The heat melted all the snow, creating landslides that rolled down the slopes at a speed of 160 kilometers per hour. So-called pyroclastic flows followed. These are a kind of avalanche of ash and rocks that can reach 500 degrees, hurtling down the slopes of the volcano between 200 and 600 kilometers per hour, obliterating any living organism in their path. There was total destruction followed by a plume of gas and ash that reached 20 kilometers in altitude and plunged 12 American states into darkness for weeks following the disaster. And just like that, one of the world's least dramatic volcanoes became one of the world's most notorious. It all happened in just a few minutes. The raging mountain unleashed billions of tons of burning, toxic material onto virgin forest, wiping it off the map in an instant. In the eruption, 57 people were either buried alive, smothered by ash, or poisoned by gas. Tens of thousands of animals were killed and hundreds of buildings, bridges, and roads were destroyed. The height of the summit of Mount St. Helens was reduced by 600 meters after this 1980 eruption. The incident is a testament to the power and unpredictability of volcanoes. As close as it's safe to get to IF Yapla Yerkel, its immense power is breathtaking. In eighth place, we present a volcano whose impact had repercussions across the European continent. Here is Iceland's Eyjafjalla Jökull, whose historic eruption in 2010 will soon be forgotten. Iceland is a volcanologist's dream, just like Hawaii. The entire island is volcanic, but unlike its South Pacific cousin, Iceland sits not only on a hot spot, but also on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. The ridge is a fault, or tear, in the Earth's surface, formed between the tectonic plates of North America and Eurasia. In this zone, the plates move away from each other, creating whole chains of volcanoes. In this tiny area, there are no less than 32 volcanic systems containing 200 volcanoes. At least 18 of them have been active in the last thousand years. This small country of barely 275,000 inhabitants has recorded a third of all the lava flows on the planet. Though Iceland is smaller than the U.S. state of Ohio, its volcanic variety is impressive. The island boasts a crater 16 kilometers in diameter called Torfajökull. The crater formed when a volcano collapsed above a magma chamber. There are also volcanoes called Tuya. These volcanoes with flat tops and steep sides are created when a volcano erupts through a sheet of ice. In this land of ice and fire, the country is lined with volcanic cracks from which lava escapes. There's a lot of action below the surface and often above. In the 20th century, Iceland recorded no less than 39 eruptions. They were either explosive eruptions, lava flows, or ash spills. 
Eyjaf Yatlar Jokuk is covered with an ice cap and surrounded by glaciers. In February 2010, seismologists began recording thousands of earthquakes at the base of the mountain, proof that the magma chamber was filling up. As the mini quakes intensified, cracks appeared in the rock. On March 20th, the eruption started. Multiple lava fountains spewing molten rock rose into the air to a height of more than 180 meters. As spectacular as it was, it was smaller than scientists had expected. But the show wasn't over yet. After a short lull, the main crater, located right in the center of the ice cap, began to erupt. The temperature skyrocketed, melting the ice, which then flowed into the magma chamber, triggering a gigantic explosion. That propelled more than 200 million cubic meters of ash eight kilometers into the air, which was then caught by the jet stream and spread across Europe. But what happened next made the whole world sit up and take notice. For a fifth day, Iceland's volcano is creating havoc in the skies. More than 300 airports across Britain and Europe were closed over the weekend. More than 63,000 flights have been canceled since Thursday. Of silica, a glass-like compound common in the Earth's crust. The eruption shot huge amounts of fine, abrasive silica dust into the atmosphere, it's creating a real hazard for aircraft engines. A day. The jet Almost stream, an air current that circulates affected. at high altitude, scattered the fine dust particles throughout central Europe. Europe, paralyzing more than 100,000 flights for eight days. Civil aviation authorities taking the unprecedented step of closing the entire UK airspace the to commercial flights. The menacing clouds of abrasive silica completely Street, crippled European air traffic, the a first the since World War II. Ten Britain million travelers were left stranded for several weeks. The collateral like cost of the disaster was the estimated between two and five billion dollars. Today, their original flights canceled when volcanic ash shut down European airspace. More than 10 years since this disaster, Iceland's volcanoes remain under close surveillance because no one knows when the next eruption will take place. Mount Pinatubo slowly simmers today after a week of devastating eruptions. Next, we travel to the Philippines, where we'll discover the volcano ranked number seven on our list. It's called Mount Pinatubo, and it erupted in 1991. The paradox of volcanoes is that the elements and minerals released during an eruption make volcanic land among the most fertile in the world. To take advantage of it, millions of people settle in these territories only to find themselves living in the ominous shadow of a potential eruption. On the island of Luzon in the Philippines stands a series of million-year-old volcanoes within the Zimbales Mountains. For centuries, these volcanoes had been sleeping. They were covered in lush forests, and locals thought them harmless. These mountains were born when the Eurasian plate slid under the Philippines plate. Although this is an active fault line, there is very little seismic activity here. Within the Zambales Mountains, Mount Pinatubo remained silent for 500 years. Its last eruption was in 1565, long before the Spaniards colonized the Philippines. But in 1991, that began to change. For four months, Mount Pinatubo quivered with thousands of small earthquakes. These were followed by explosions of steam. Ready or not, Pinatubo was clearly coming out of its slumber. On the 7th of June, lava began erupting from the summit. Five anxious days later, on June 12th, the highly pressurized gas-filled magma reached the volcano chamber and eventually exploded with unprecedented violence, sending huge volumes of debris several kilometers into the air. On June 15th, at 1.42 p.m., 
a volume of extremely pressurized magma reached the crater of the volcano and triggered a cataclysmic explosion. To calculate the explosiveness index of a volcano, Volcanologists take several parameters into account. The volume of material ejected, the height of the smoke plume, and the duration of the eruption. It is a logarithmic scale. Each unit on the scale is 10 times larger than the one before it. On this scale, the 2010 Iyavyatla Yokuch eruption was level 4. That's considered a catastrophic eruption, which volcanologists would expect to see once every 18 months. The Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980 was 10 times more powerful. That was called a cataclysmic eruption that can occur on average once every 12 years. The eruption of Mount Pinatubo reached level 6, 10 times more powerful than the eruption of Mount St. Helens. It was classified as a colossal eruption. Colossal eruptions occur every 50 to 100 years. The latter goes up to level 8 considered an apocalyptic eruption. Mount Pinatubo the launched Philippines more than a thousand cubic kilometers cut. of material, 35 kilometers for into three the days. air. By the, the time it was done, the eruption had released engines. more than 10 billion tons of debris. First, the eruption hurled ash, rock, silica dust, and toxic gases high into the atmosphere. And then, as we all know, what goes up must come down. The lower levels of the ash cloud were spread by a typhoon and covered hundreds of square kilometers of countryside with a For thick hundreds layer. Of miles around, this lush decimated all vegetation. The ash that landed destroyed. on the rooftops absorbed the intense rain, becoming thick and dense. The wet ash was so heavy it caused thousands of buildings to collapse, causing almost all the volcano's fatalities. Meanwhile, the clouds of particles that reached the upper layers of the atmosphere circled the globe several times. The 20 million tons of sulfur dioxide they contained caused the global average temperature to drop by half a degree for almost two years. That temperature drop had cataclysmic consequences. On the island, the nightmare continued. Pyroplastic flows raced down the sides of the volcano. As they combined with water, they created devastating landslides called lahars. They flow like liquid mud and set as solid as concrete, entombing everything in their path. The lahars covered valleys 200 meters thick, burying entire villages and towns. The eruption killed more than 800 people. But thanks to the work of the geologists and the warning given before the explosion, more than 2 million inhabitants were able to be evacuated and escape the disaster. People living under the threat of a volcano know that even after 500 years, they must remain vigilant. Oh. Explosion three miles into the sky, belching fury that dwarfs the man-made war nearby. Now let's head to Italy to discover one of the most notorious volcanic eruptions in history, the eruption of Vesuvius. Year is 79 AD. The Roman Empire is approaching its peak. Dominating Europe, Rome possesses power and wealth that no nation can challenge. Undefeated in battle for 70 years, the Romans feel invincible. And yet, a volcano will show them that nature always has the final word. Vesuvius is part of the Campanian Volcanic Arc, formed by the African plate sliding under the Eurasian plate. It is one of the most active volcanoes in the world. 2,000 years ago, the inhabitants of Naples knew that the mountain dominating their horizon was spitting fire. They also knew that because of it, their lands were fertile. What they didn't realize was that the hand that gives can also take.
Vesuvius had been showing signs of waking up for a few years. Then, one morning, a plume of ash and steam began to rise from its crater. Most of the inhabitants did not pay much attention to the plume. While some may have fled at the sight of it, many others simply carried on as if nothing was happening. A decision that would make them a fascinating part of history. Around 1 p.m., Vesuvius exploded, spitting out a column of hot ash, gas, and rock at a rate of 1.5 million tons per second. Within 20 hours of the first explosion, as the plume rose more than 30 kilometers into the sky, an ash cloud formed. It was filled with billions of tons of debris, which began to rain down on the region. Ash and rock, with temperatures over 140 degrees, covered every roof, every road, and every path. By nightfall, the city of Herculaneum was buried in ash, wiped off the map along with its dead. The next morning, as the ash continued to fall, the situation grew even worse. The column collapsed and pyroclastic flows started to descend the slopes of Vesuvius. According to historians and geologists, there were a total of five waves of eruptions that came off the mountain. Each eruption was more powerful than the last. The final two blasts literally buried the city of Pompeii under nearly two meters of ash and rock that were heated to over 300 degrees. Pompeii, Herculaneum, and Oplantis will remain covered in ash for almost 2,000 years. It was not until 1738 that a Spanish army engineer, Roque Joaquin de El Cubiere, was ordered by King Charles III to investigate Herculaneum and Pompeii. His excavations unearthed the remains of these cities and their inhabitants that had been frozen in time. Today, the two sites are among the most visited in the world. To this day, the eruption of Vesuvius remains Europe's most devastating eruption, exploding with the energy of 100,000 Hiroshima bombs. The disaster is said to have killed nearly 16,000 people. Today, three million people still live in the shadow of Vesuvius. Everyone living there knows that if an eruption happens again, they'll have to be ready to flee, and very quickly. to cause catastrophe, as our number five in the countdown will demonstrate. We're heading to South America and the country of Colombia, where in 1985, the Nevado del Ruiz eruption took the country by surprise. The Nevado del Ruiz is part of the Ruiz Tolima Volcanic Massif. It is made up of five stratovolcanoes that formed on a fault line between the Nazca Plate and the South American Plate. This volcano has been active for 150,000 years, but before the 1985 eruption, it had been asleep for 140 years. In September of that year, geologists studying the site detected alarming signs. There were small phreatic eruptions where magma meets groundwater occurring on the flanks of the volcano, as well as abnormal seismic activity around its base. They alerted the Colombian authorities that the volcano was waking up and that eruptions causing lahars, deadly mudslides that swallowed everything in their path, could occur. But the Colombian government decided to wait and see. They waited, then they saw. Colombia, November 13th, 1985. The On November 13th, around 3 p.m., a major phreatic eruption is triggered, but authorities river, still aren't concerned. Then at 9.09 p.m., the magma at the heart of the crater begins to bubble. The instant the thousand-degree lava starts to flow down the slopes, millions of tons of snow and ice that covered the volcano melt. Water combines with rock and ash. Masses of mud form and flow, creating deadly lahars. In just 20 minutes, a wave of mud 30 meters high descends and crashes into one of the surrounding valleys at more than 40 kilometers per hour. 
an hour later, the flow reaches the town of Chinchina. The thick torrent, as tall as a nine-story building, sweeps away everything in its path. 400 houses are destroyed. In just a few seconds, 2,000 inhabitants are killed. Armero, a city of 29,000 inhabitants, located 50 kilometers from Chinchina, suffers heavy ashfall at around the same time. Local authorities are asking residents to stay calm. They're in no immediate danger and to stay tuned for any updates. But by the time the authorities try to issue a warning, it's too late. A storm has cut power to the city and wiped out communication, dooming the town. At 11.30 p.m., when most people are in bed, the gigantic wave of mud swallows the city, the first of many. The impact is catastrophic. Our marrow is obliterated. The Lahars devoured everything on their way to our marrow. In our marrow, more than 20,000 people were killed and 5,000 badly injured, along with 5,000 homes, 50 schools, two hospitals, and countless roads and bridges. In all, 23,000 Colombians lost their lives that night. But not every victim died instantly. Hundreds were trapped in the debris field or stuck in the thick, impenetrable, and inescapable mud. Rescue attempts were futile. Survivors and rescuers who arrived after the disaster could do little but watch the trapped victims slowly succumb to their injuries as the tragedy unfolded before their eyes. While the government declared a national mourning, a wave of protest spread across the country. The protesters knew that if the government had heeded the experts' warnings and launched an alert in time, many lives could have been spared. But even the volcanologists were surprised by the amount of carnage caused by the relatively small eruption. The tragedy at Nevado del Ruiz taught them that all you need is enough snow and ice and a high enough volcano. The lesson that could help prevent a tragedy like this from happening again. to Indonesia, one of the most active volcanic regions on the planet. Here, we discover the volcano that takes the fourth position in our ranking, the 1883 eruption of Krakatoa. In 1883, Krakatoa was an uninhabited volcanic island located between Java and Sumatra. It's situated above the fault line where the Indo-Australian tectonic plates lies under the Eurasian plate. For several centuries, the area experienced intense explosive activity, but nothing compared to what was about to come. In the years preceding the eruption, geologists noted that seismic activity was intensifying. Then, on May 20th, 1883, Krakatoa begins to erupt. At first, it isn't threatening. Columns of steam and ash escape from the crater and rise six kilometers above sea level. The first explosions are heard nearly 160 kilometers away. In June, the activity accelerates. The crater belches thick black smoke which shrouds the island, and the phreatic explosions grow even louder. In August, the island reaches a crisis point. The eruptions continue to intensify. On August 25th, around 1 p.m., the smoky column of ash and vapor rises to a height of 27 kilometers. Explosions boom from the bottom of the crater every 10 minutes. On August 27th at 5.30 a.m., First massive explosion shakes the island. A second, even more powerful explosion comes at 64. Less than four hours later, at 10:02, the third explosion rocks the island, which disintegrates under its power, equal to the energy of more than 10,000 Hiroshima bombs. From 160 kilometers away, 
blast is estimated at 180 decibels. It ruptures the eardrums of sailors who were more than 65 kilometers from the explosion, which could be heard more than 5,000 kilometers away. The shockwave travels around the world seven times. Over 50 billion tons of debris are held to a height of more than 80 kilometers into the atmosphere. If Krakatoa had been placed in central London, the shockwave alone would have demolished all the buildings from Cambridge in the north to Brighton in the south. Ten million people would have died instantly, and the explosion would have been heard in Baghdad and New York. The island was uninhabited, but that had little effect on the astonishing death count. And it wasn't the explosion that claimed most of the victims. Columns of ash, weighing millions of tons, fell into the sea and triggered giant tsunamis whose waves reached nearly 40 meters in height. On the neighboring island of Sebesi, dozens of coastal villages were wiped out. Pyroclastic flows also raged across the ocean. Between the drowning waves and the smothering ash, the eruption of Krakatoa killed nearly 36,000 people. The island of Krakatoa was no more. For three full days, the sun was completely hidden for hundreds of kilometers around the volcano. Ash clouds that rose into the stratosphere plunged the world into a global winter, lowering temperatures for several years. After the eruption, fiery sunsets were seen all around the planet as the remains of a vanished island circulated through the atmosphere, carried away by the winds. Krakatoa is a powerful example of the danger that sleeps beneath the Earth's crust. It's also a reminder that at any time, the wrath of the Earth can awaken. taking third place in our ranking has the dubious honor of claiming the most victims in history. It's the eruption of Mount Kali in Martinique in 1902. Martinique is located on the volcanic arc of the Lesser Antilles, where the South American continental plate slides under the Caribbean plate. More than 100,000 years old, Mount Pali has been active all its life, but with long periods of calm. In 1850, the island had grown to be an important French colony and a desirable place to live, the Paris of the Antilles. But unlike Paris, small steam explosions, fumaroles, often reminded the inhabitants that the island is volcanic and that a threat lurked beneath these postcard landscapes. In 1905, towards the end of April, the threat becomes more pressing. Small eruptions caused by phreatic explosions are beginning to worry the population, but a scientific committee formed for the occasion tries to reassure the inhabitants and affirms that they have nothing to fear. As the summit spits ash and rocks, curious locals hike up the mountain and report that it sounded like a vast cauldron of boiling water a clear indication that disaster is imminent. Over the next two weeks, the huge columns of ash that escaped from the volcano rain down. The ash poisons the water supply, kills livestock, and destroys the harvest. A large part of the island's population relocates to the coastal town and sanctuary of St. Pierre. They've been told by the scientific committee that they will be safer there. Eventually, 30,000 Martiniquans heed their advice. On May 8th, around 8 a.m., sailors report a gigantic horizontal explosion coming from the mountain's southwest face. It is a monumental pyroclastic flow composed of white steam, ash, and gas. It's moving at the rate of 160 kilometers per hour. It hits St. Pierre in less than two minutes and incinerates everyone and everything in its path. Of the 30,000 people taking refuge there, only a few hundred survive. 
12 days later, while rescuers are still working hard in the city, another explosion is triggered, equally as powerful as the previous one. Those who had survived the first explosion don't survive this one, and what little remained of the town of St. Pierre is completely destroyed. The eruptions from Mount Pali reached only level four on the explosiveness scale. But when a city is located just a few kilometers from the volcano and positioned in the axis of its explosion, that's more than enough to reduce everything to nothing. The Paris of the Antilles became the Pompeii of the Antilles. eruptions, we return to Indonesia. We present the most destructive volcanic event in history, the eruption of Mount Tambora in 1815. At 40,000 years old, Tambora is a young volcano. It lies on a fault between the Australian plate which slides under the Sunda plate. It had been quiet for several centuries, but in 1812, the mountain began to rumble. Deep within the mountain, the pressure in the magma chamber began to climb, reaching unimaginable levels. For the first time in hundreds of years, smoke began escaping ominously from the crater. Then, for several months, everything went calm again, until April 5th, 1815, when the eruptions resumed. Explosions from Tambora came so loud they were heard more than 1,200 kilometers away. The next day, ash began to fall on the island of Java. For five days, the explosions grew stronger and stronger as the pressure inside the volcano continued to rise. On the evening of April 10th, a cataclysmic eruption began. Three massive plumes escaped from the crater and rose into the atmosphere where they merged. All around the island, hot ash and chunks of pumice 20 centimeters across began to rain down. Then suddenly, a huge explosion ripped the mountain. It forced burning pyroclastic clouds to surge in all directions, killing everything in their path. When the debris from the explosion started falling back into the sea, it triggered huge tsunamis. They ultimately wiped out many villages. During its multiple eruptions, the volcano released 33 gigatons of energy, the equivalent of 16 million Hiroshima bombs. Phenomenal power. The next morning, the Tambora volcano had lost a third of its height. It also killed 10,000 people. The column of ash that rose more than 50 kilometers into the atmosphere contained more than 80 cubic kilometers of material, tens of billions of tons of ash and gas. Anything that didn't fall back to the ground, killing whatever it landed on, stayed in the atmosphere for several years. The ash fall destroyed local agriculture and triggered a period of famine that directly led to the death of 50,000 people. Once again, this was a global event. Particles kicked up from the eruption were blown around the world, which caused global temperatures to drop. This alone killed thousands, and 1816 became known as the year without a summer. In New York, snow fell in the month of June. The decade, starting in 1810, remains to this day the coldest on record. All around the world during this time, famine also hit record levels. And with famine came the spread of diseases like typhus and cholera. The additional collateral death toll reached tens of thousands. Even today, it's impossible to accurately quantify the death toll of the violent eruption of the Tambora volcano. It officially exceeded 100,000, but could actually reach several million if we take into account the collateral effects triggered by the aftermath of the eruption. Disasters of this magnitude can only be caused by volcanoes. Since the 
spectacular eruption of Mount St. Helens. You've seen several examples of the destructive power of volcanoes, but now get ready to experience an eruption that exceeds all others. The number one spot on our list is held by the eruption of the Toba supervolcano in Indonesia. Supervolcanoes are absolute monsters. They are the only volcanoes to reach level eight on the explosiveness scale. They trigger so-called apocalyptic eruptions that release trillions of tons of rock and gas and have catastrophic effects on the planet. If you know anything about supervolcanoes, you may be thinking of Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming in the United States. Geologists have discovered that the entire park is actually a giant caldera that could, if it erupts, wipe the entire west coast of America off the map. But Yellowstone is just one of 20 known supervolcanoes on Earth, and arguably not even its greatest threat. The most recent level eight eruption occurred at Lake Toba in Indonesia about 74,000 years ago. We don't know exactly when, why, or how the Toba supervolcano happened. But we do have a lot of other information and the numbers are staggering. It was the most explosive event to occur on Earth in 25 million years. The release of one cubic kilometer of material is considered a huge volume. During the Lake Toba eruption, 3,700 cubic kilometers of material were released from the volcano. That's 450 times more material released than from the eruption of the submarine volcano Hunga Tonga in 2022. 1,000 times more material than was released from the eruption of Pinatubo in 1991. More than 50 trillion tons of magma, 20 trillion tons of ash. Enough to cover all of Australia to a depth of half a meter. The eruption smothered a large part of India under six meters of ash. It is even believed that the forests in the center of India were destroyed within a radius of nearly 5,000 kilometers. Flows, 600 meters thick, covered an area of more than 200,000 square kilometers. That's the equivalent of the state of New Jersey, covered with a layer so thick that we would have to dig 300 meters to reach the roof of the tallest buildings. Some geologists even believe that these figures have been underestimated and that they could be up to five times higher. The sheer magnitude of an event like this defies imagination. According to scientists, six billion tons of sulfur dioxide would have been spread throughout the atmosphere and caused the average global temperature to drop by 15 degrees Celsius for at least three years. That's four times the level needed to cause a global ice age, and that is the most conservative scenario. In the worst case scenario, the eruption would have caused global temperatures to drop by five degrees during the 200 years it took for the trillions of tons of ash to leave the stratosphere. A phenomenon that would have led to 1,000 years of winter and led to a reduction in the genetic diversity of humanity. 70,000 years ago, when the Toba volcano erupted, the population of the entire world dropped to 10,000 people. According to this grim hypothesis, the lack of vegetation caused by the disaster led to a worldwide famine for humans and animals that would have slowed the evolution of the human species and the progress of civilization for tens of thousands of years. Scientists are still divided on the consequences of the Toba eruption, but what is beyond doubt is that it is far and away the most significant volcanic eruption in geological history. If the world were to experience something similar today, millions of people across the globe would die and life as we know it would be forever changed.
and the volcano Mauna Loa erupts after a lull of 20 years. The power of volcanoes, even the least destructive ones, remains phenomenal. And there are dozens of them still active and capable of releasing more energy than all the nuclear weapons ever created. Fortunately, the life of these fire monsters is measured on a geological scale. In all probability, it will take several generations to relive an eruption like that of Mount Pinatubo in 1991. Hopefully, several millennia will pass before an eruption like Tobo will happen again. Today, scientists have the Earth under close surveillance and are getting better at predicting eruptions earlier. But all they can do is warn us. And we better listen. When it comes to volcanoes, there's no no stopping them.